<laughs> I look over my shoulder. Oh, I gotta go this way. I gotta do it there. Look at there. Oh, 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 bring, that, bring, it, bring it up I here. Got, I got me one. Huh? Bring that up here. I want to see it. Bring. <laughs> Other way. So, all right. So. <laughs> So, so tell us about the trophy. What's it for? What did you win? Uh, enlighten me. That's irritating. That's what it's for. Ah. 2015. How about that? I got me one. Hey, you know what, John? My partner's dream, and it's mine too, to have one of those fish on a trophy. <laughs> You'll get one. <laughs> Just keep counting. <laughs> so, now, go ahead. That was, you want me to tell you about that? I want to hear about it. That was the craziest thing. We'd been crappie fishing. My dad, of course, I grew up bass fishing. Well, I mean, not grew up. When I was little, we brim fish. But, and stuff like that with daddy, you know. But as I got older and got to bass fishing, uh, got the bass fishing book. Matter of fact, on my wedding night, I spent, when it was brand new, at Darbonne Lodge, that's where I spent my honeymoon, my my marriage night. Really? And I fished a tournament, bass tournament the next morning. That's what kind of woman I got. I won 600 bucks, so, so <laughs> <laughs> made it a lot better. <laughs> made it a lot better. But uh, now we were, uh, so after we got into crappie fishing, we went through the jig tying stage. I went through all that, you know, and um, got to fish with uh, Ronnie Caps. They came and done a show, uh, crappie, what, what, crappie time. Okay. And I learned that we was doing, me and a friend of mine, Jay Stone, which is Alan Phil's oldest son's son-in-law. But anyway, that we were doing things, you know, a lot like they, you know, we was on the right track. We wasn't, you know, we was on the right, which was pretty exciting. And then that first crappie masters came and uh, we entered it. And uh, I was thinking if I could just get in the top 10 with these guys, cause I seen what they did. Right. And, uh, but man, we, we just, we won the whole thing, which pretty exciting. Well, so, we didn't win it on Darbone. You could actually fish uh, three lakes, Caney, uh, Claiborne, and Darbone. Uh -huh. And uh, they had it right a little bit later than this. And when the fish spawn in Darbone, I mean, they get like razor blades for some reason. Right. So we need the better fish would be in Caney if we could find some good ones. And he did. Well, Jay found them because I had to go. That was right when the duck dynasty deals going on and when the, uh, we had to go to Vegas to the, they had that what's in plays, you know, what what they call it? I guess that's what, it, like Broadway and all that? Gotcha. That was coming out. Right. And, uh, they were showing it in Broadway. So I had to go there to Vegas and uh, I came by. He said, well, he called me. He said, I found some on Caney and Paul and my wife heard said, y'all ain't fishing Caney. Because it's a wild card. You know, it's just super clear. It's hard to fish. And unless you, you got to know right where they was. Right. They said, don't worry. I've got them. So really? we, did, we fished. And we'd never tried to keep fish alive before. I've never tried to. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're eating them, you know. <laughs> and, um, we had a big ice chest and full of water. And had oxygen on it, you know. We was set up. I had ice bottles, you know. I, I was doing everything I could read about trying to keep fish alive. Was it hot, or was it was it similar temperatures we got? It going was on? no. It was kind of. It wasn't hot, hot. It was just a little bit later than right now. Okay. And maybe two weeks from now or something like that. It was postponed. But right. uh, man, we we got in there and called. Oh, this is something. Um, I. <laughs> the Friday before the tournament, that Friday night, we was headed to the meeting and I went by my boat and I had one of them old terrors on my boat, 
with the remote control, you know, where you could right. just where we could long line from the back. And I hit that button and smoke boiled out of the head of my trolling motor. <laughs> I went, oh my goodness. <laughs> what in the world are we going to do? I called the EK, the local shop here. He said, bring it by, bring it by. He said, man, it's fried. You, you know, he, so we fished out of Jay's boat, which he had to put, you know, he didn't have a remote control trolling motor. So he had to fish in the front and he fished with two rods and I fished with six in the back. So he was getting on the pedal and getting off, letting on the pedal, because we was trying to stay at one mile an hour. Right. And, um, we come by this brush pile. <laughs> it started raining. And as soon as it started raining, then they turned on. I had four poles go off at one time. <laughs> and Jay's looking back here. He said, don't let them get off. Don't let them get off. I said, I can't do nothing. I was up, throwing a rod in the bottom of the boat, reeling and nothing, throwing We got them all four with white fish, too. So it was kind of, we had 12 pounds, 12.25, something like that. It was pretty cool. What, were, we you leading, were you leading after day one or did you come from behind? What did it you, was just a one day tournament. One day event, okay. Yeah. And um, it was uh, at 10 o'clock, our biggest fish rolled up on its side. And we was like scared. We were like, <laughs> oh no. Well, we, well, we called about 50, you know. Right. But, but we were scared, boy, because if that thing dies, we're in trouble. Right. So Jay said, I think the scale's open at 11. And I said, no, nah, I think he said 1 o'clock. He said, no, nah, it's 11 o'clock. We, we, we need to go. We need to go. And I said, <laughs> no, because we're an hour away. Right. And I said, I think, but it was it was 1, but we took off. So we didn't actually fish for four hours. And um but when we got there, I guess all that shaking up and stuff, he was fine. And uh, so, did you think that you were gonna be? Do you did you know you had a good number? We or knew you, twelve pounds was probably good, right? But we did. I'd never paid attention to the tournament scene to know what people weighed here, there, yonder. So I didn't know. I was just hoping. But when at one after one, they kept coming up for ten pounds. 10 pounds. I think Waddy Outlaw had 11 pounds. They was the closest one to, to us. And, uh, man, well, it was, I was ecstatic because right? it was, it was pretty awesome deal because I knew what them dudes could do. Yeah, no doubt. So yeah. is, is your home lake Darbone then? It Where is. I am 20 minutes from a ramp. Wow. And you opted to go an hour away. Because your partner found the found the fish. Yeah, because the fish, well, Jay used to live on it too, so he knew it pretty good. And uh, But we just knew them fish were, uh, we knew where we was going to fish on Darbon. Right. But we knew it was just chancy because them fish got so poor, you know, so, right so, after the spawn. So you, you troll, you long line. Long line, yep. And that was, man, I didn't want to start that. And we heard them guys over Mississippi pulling them crankbaits, you know, and, uh, but they got counting reels and special rods. <laughs> like, well, I don't get all that mess, you know, and, well, uh, but you ain't got to have it. We just, I just got spinning tackle, you know? Right. And, um, we just throw it out there a good length. Uh, we use different size jig head that day we were using, they was, we was fishing 20 foot water. It was it was a series of four brush piles. It was about 150 yards, and they were in 20 foot of water, but they came up to eight foot of the top. So we was using eighth ounce jig heads because eight ounce jig heads at one mile an hour they they're about seven foot deep. So right. we were coming right across the top of it, and the property was set up on top of them brush piles, and that's how we was catching. Wow! So. I had a wonderful conversation with you at Grizzly Jig. I really appreciate you taking the time out to, to talk to me about electronics and everything like that. And this will be a nice segue into that because, you know, in 2015, we didn't have live scope. We did. We have side imaging with side imaging just coming. Side imaging had to be fairly new at the time. So. What electronics 
were you using then? And then before you start there, I just want to say, I, I do appreciate you taking the time out and spending it with three pound fishing. And uh, I think people are going to get a kick out of, you know, the, the information you can share with us from your perspective. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, now so we did have side imaging then. We okay. Did. Okay. And that was, we had a, uh, let's say I had, what was that? 1099 hummingbirds is what I had. I love hummingbirds because, uh, I used to watch Hank Parker, you know, on TV, and they, he always used them hummingbirds. So I guess I guess people do have an influence on what you buy, you know. But but he came from behind, you know, he, that where he called his wife on stage. I thought that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's a big story to that is why I liked him. But anyway, him and Jimmy Houston and Bill Dance, I used to watch them and think, man, that'd be awesome. You could somehow do something like that for a living. Right. But as it turned out, for me, I was in the right spot at the right time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're targeting, when you're long lining, are you deciding the depth of the fish based on what you have caught in the last maybe 30 minutes or so? Or are you using 2D or something to to actually identify where they're at in the water column. Yeah, I would use both. I actually, well, that side images and the mega imaging now is so awesome. Right. I'll do a lot of just scanning, you know, where instead of fish, and a lot of people you think, well, I gotta be fishing, I gotta be fishing. But I mean, we scout for deer, we scout for ducks. Why not scout for fish? If you see them on, you can see them on there. If you learn how to read it and know what you're looking for, you can see, especially in a brush pile, or you can see shadows. Right. If they're close to the bottom, you can see the shadows, and you got to just look for them little, uh, little. I call them maggots. If there's not a bunch together, but you can right. tell. And that's that was pretty interesting because I that's what made me you start using longer poles in my side in my long lining because we noticed if we were like 12 foot or shallower we would see fish on the side scan but they would be outside of our boat you know to the side and right. i think i think they were parting in that shallow water because our outside poles was catching more fish than the other ones. so right. I think they, they part and then they come back as you pass in that shallow water. You're spooking from the boat, you know. Right. So I, so I started using, I got 16-foot poles, my long pole. Now my 10-foot is my short pole. Now. Wow. So would long lining still be your choice of crappie fishing? Would that be, is that your favorite? I mean, everybody has their favorite way of crappie fishing. Mine's over a brush pile, single pole. Would it, yeah. would, would What's your thing? Long line? Well, yeah. well, I guess long line, it's been so long, you know, but I, I like it all. Uh, that Lake Caney, which I'm probably going tomorrow and fish it. Uh, we'll have to mark a pile. Now, we'll, we'll look and we'll find new piles with our side scan. Right. We'll right. mark them. I mean, what you, with today's electronics, nobody's piles are safe, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, People, you know, I'm with Mossback, and people say, I don't want to throw that expensive thing in there. I said, well, how many piles are you fishing you didn't put in? Right. I said, and better yet, how many times do you have to wait to fish that pile? It's not right. a handful. It's not a handful. So, I mean, you just got to give and take. You're fishing yeah. somebody else. They put all the work into putting it out. You're fishing it. What's the difference? Well, that's a great point. I never think I never think of it that way, but I look over at my piles that I put in, and I'm always saying, "He's on my pile. He's on my yeah. pile." Yeah, <laughs> but they ain't say. But anyway, that long line, I mean, that side imaging, it, it's real important. And and yeah, you talking about that live scope? I fished with this guy, uh, John. I'm not gonna say his name right. Soka, John Soka with the bass tank, uh -huh. with that live scope, and that was I was surprised at how many fish I was seeing running from me before we got there. Right. They was running from us out in front of the boat, biggins. Right. I was like, That's a wonder we catch any big fish. <laughs> I right. guess they didn't get them big boats stay in them thickets, you know, they get big for a reason. I guess them big crappie do too, because right. just this last week they had that crappie masters here. Right. And they done caught three three pounders 
And I ain't never heard of three pounders. It's been a long time since a three pounders been talked about on dog bone. And they've caught three in the last week and a half. So to your point, I think side imaging is incredibly important. Uh, in fact, today when I went out fishing with my buddy Marcus, uh, he complained about how much time we were spending scanning the the points and in, in the main lake looking for schools of fish. And I, I actually enjoy finding them. And I think it gives you a good picture across the entire lake as to what the story is, what's going on. So you spend the time in first, you, you know, it might be a little bit longer than some people want to, but then that's when you, you hunker down and that's when you start your fishing. Um, I get, I get a kick out of using, I think side imaging is just, I won't say maybe it's, it's, it's just as important as live scope. It truly is. Um, is. Especially, on, especially on lakes that you don't know. So when I go back down to, you know, Lake Darbo and if I ever, when I go down there, um, it'll be the first thing I utilize when I go to the points and I, I'm, that's what I'm going to be using. I'm not going to be live scoping around for the fish. Um, I'm going to identify some key parts and then I'm going to go up with live scope and I'm going to try to find the fish with it. Yeah. I think you'd have to find them first with the side imaging. Yep. Man, but that's what you was talking about the side imaging in 2D. I notice where they're sitting. Once I find, once I get in the area, well, you know, pretty much I know Darbone. So I go through there and I look and I just see how deep they are. If they're, right. if I don't see many, it don't spook me because, you know, your transducer can't see up high, right? like three foot and up. So you got to have a 30 second on. 30 second to go two, three foot at one mile an hour. And you got to have it on. And you'd be surprised in the heat of the summer, uh, in the cold of the winter, if the sun shines, uh -huh. especially before spawn, right. the big females, and I think it's they're warming them eggs up. They'll get over 20 foot of water, but they'll be two foot on the surface. That's right. Yeah, we saw that today. You'll catch them on 30 seconds going, yeah. you know, in 20 foot of water. Yeah. Sure will. I think that, you know, when you said like the big fish were running away from you, I think it's interesting. Like what I saw in Grenada this last weekend was the different tactics guys would take. Some guys were full thrust to the fish. Other guys I could tell were going really easy. And 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 I, I need to learn that boat control and that those different type of tactics. But how, what when you when you were in the boat with him, what was it? What was the approach you guys were taking? Is it? fast or is it slow is it what's the he was uh he he had the transducer on the trailer motor right and he was scanning I, I said he'd go a little bit and he'd turn it left and he'd turn it right i'm trying to put my hand up there and do <laughs> i don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> <laughs> but, everything's backwards right yeah but he was uh he was trolling and uh He'd get off the trailer motor and he'd scan. He'd scan. He'd look. He'd see one. He'd go chase. He was something else. He was pretty good. Sure, he's pretty knowledgeable too on how to set up all that stuff. So, how do you have your live scope set up right now? It is well. I don't really know. Mine's on the trailer motor, right? But uh, it's a. Uh, and I don't know if I want to stick. I thought I'd wanted to stick, but I'm not going to use it. I mean, I'm gonna find stuff first with that side image, and yep. one, then once I find it, then you can utilize that. But yep, that's all the way. Yeah. I can see where 360 would benefit you too, yeah. especially in the wind, because you ain't having to search for it. Because what people don't realize how fast when you get off a trailer motor in the wind, how fast that wind gets you oh, off of it. You're going backwards. <laughs> yeah, and that 360, you could always keep that pile in in B. Right. So sure. I, I do agree with you. I think the 360 is a huge advantage. Um, and I, I know a lot of people out there are making the choice between 360 and live scope. That's probably their first choice. They're like, do I go 360? Do I go live scope? Uh, and that's a toss up. I think a lot of people, you know, that's a hard one to, to kind of decipher because I like the idea that on 360, you know, you do have this, circle around you i guess some people can i don't have it now but you can actually just have it focused in front of you as well but um it's not being manipulated by the trolling motor and it's a constant picture that keeps regenerating itself correct so yeah yeah 
Yeah, had to be. Oh, if you could have both of them, it'd be <laughs> awesome too. But I'm telling you, this tournament fishing just changed overnight with that deal. And it's going to continue to change as things start developing more. You know, it's going to be, I mean, good night. They're, they're putting up bass weights now for tournaments. Do you hear much of the bass guys using the, other than we know some popular anglers like Josh Jones is using it obviously in some of what he's posting, but I don't, I don't ever hear much of it about on the, on the bass. I, have, no, I know they have it. I know Mark Daniels has it. Uh, Christie's got it. Uh, and a few others, but I don't hear them talking about using it. Right. And I don't know if it's just their style. They need to get in the boat with a crappie fish. They do. <laughs> I think they'd learn something. Yeah, I agree. Some of them guys that know how to use it. Yeah. No, for sure. The uh, what's your thoughts on perspective view? Have you have you seen that yet? I hadn't seen that yet. I, I've seen just some pictures of it, but I don't know. I don't know how that would. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that would work. It seems it seems different. What do you think? I, I don't have it either, and I haven't even done the upgrade yet. Um, I actually tried to do it today when I went out to the lake, um, and I couldn't get it done. My, apparently, my SD card was – something was wrong with it. But I'm going to try it, and I'm going to see if it's if there's value there. I can use my current live scope, and I think I can find fish shallow. So – I and I think they say that's one of the big advantages of perspective is that you can really see fish shallow. Yeah. Um, well, so, I was fishing in the trees the other day. I could see with your with your regular live scope. Four yeah, foot, four foot deep. Yeah, so I, I think I see a value if if it is showing a picture in front of you. Uh, you know, you could cast towards it, but I typically use my current live scope to do the same thing. So, and I do the same thing that your guy mentioned. I sweep it back left and right constantly. Um, do you have an Ultrax? Is that what you use as well? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is that not the best darn trolling motor in the sea? That is the cat's meow. I couldn't <laughs> imagine life without it. It's unbelievable. I mean, the Ultrax is, and it continues to get better with built-in sonar. And, uh, you know, I, and, I, and I'll tell you what a game changer for me would be is if they came out with an Ultrax with a built-in 360, I don't know how that would be done, but. I know I honestly, I don't know why you couldn't just mount a 360 transducer below the barrel of the trolling motor. Um, what if they came out with that in ICAST this 2020 in July? Would that not be? They come out with side side scan <laughs> in the trolling motor. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how that stuff works. That's over my. You know, that's a different deal. It's got to go in a circle. Yeah. But that seemed like it worked. Well, I mean, the transducer, it looks like, and again, it's above what I, I understand too, but it's like its like this ball and it's something in there rotating, right? So I would think yeah. put it on the bottom of the barrel and, but I don't know if there would be feedback or something like that from the, from the prop. Well, I know one thing, once you come down and fish Darbone one time, you might think you might need a little protection for that barrel down there. Ah, gotcha. Good point. Because that's Stump City. You yeah. come to Darbone, don't get out of them channel markers running. Once you leave in channel markers, you're on out. Really? It's a minefield. Wow. It is. I think that's why the fishing's so good there. There's <laughs> so much cover. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell me about what your plans are this year in regards to like the tournaments you plan on fishing. Um, well, I, I do a lot of speaking, which I'm blessed to do. I speak at a lot of churches, do a lot of expo stuff, and I don't really get to, I'd fish every one of them if I could, but I got that going on every weekend, so I don't remember. I am going to fish a catfish tournament. Yeah. I, I got to go fishing with Bill Dance, which was pretty awesome. And, <laughs> uh, he does that bottom bouncing. Yeah. Have you heard of that? No. I hadn't either. All I ever done is put a pole in a fork and stick, you know? Yeah. Set on the riverbank. They get in the trailer motors, point it into the current, 
and they drift with the current, but they turn the trailer motor on where they're just going half the speed of the current. And they right. got like a six ounce weight and a leader with your cut bait on it. And you bounce that off the bottom of that current. It takes getting used to, to, right. to feel that bottom. But man, it's because you're moving, it's fun, and it's it's kind of like long lining backwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. But you'll catch some big ones like that. So Fish you're not just a crappie, you're, you're catfish, crappie, bass, you like it all. Yep. <laughs> but, I'm, but I crappie most of the time. Yeah. Well, Daddy Cat won't me to fish for him, and I didn't want, because I was bass fishing, you know. I'm getting a boat chunk three or four times, you know, wow, we're going to the next spot. And, uh, he kept wanting me to. I finally went crappie fishing with him. We caught a bunch, and he cooked them up for me. And I tasted one. I said, "Okay, I get it." And How I started old crappie fishing. How old were you about? I was about probably twenty-two, twenty-three. Right. Interesting. I started bluegill fishing. That's how I got into crappie fishing. Every every once in a while, I would catch this this fish called crappie, and all I knew is that when I filleted it up, there was more meat on the crappie than there was ever on the bluegill. Yeah, but they're so, great too. Yeah, they are great. We love bluegill, but there was a lot more work involved with getting that meat than there was on the crappie. And after bluegill had spawned, I wanted to continue fishing, and so that's when I got a buddy that was a really that's still a really great fisherman here. And he kind of mentored me and taught me uh, about crappie fishing. That's kind of how I got into it. But Yeah, I can always remember fishing with Daddy. Daddy made it pretty fun for me growing up, you know, hunting and all kind of stuff. He was, I just remember it was fun. He was always – one thing I hated that he did, though, he threw them <laughs> thinking fish in an ice chest with the Cokes or Pops. I don't know what y'all call them. Uh -huh. Coach, Coach, Sprite, Sprite. Yeah. Anyway, and you'd have to drink them old slimy Coach. I hated it. <laughs> He'd say, "Just wipe it off. Just wipe it off." <laughs> but yeah, he we got coke. some. He wanted to keep them in there to keep them cold, right? The fish. Yeah. Cold. <laughs> Let him bring them. But he, I mean, let's get two ice chests. You know, I ain't doing. <laughs> no, I ain't drinking a slimy Coke. <laughs> but anyway, there's a lake here, that Caney Lake. It's full uh -huh. of them. We call them chicken pens, or my wife calls them chicken pens, or shell crackers, red ears. That's what they are. They get pretty big too in this lake because yeah. they got some Eurasian crams in there. Right. And they really feed on them. Matter of fact, they fix and start up, and we get on them pretty heavy. But them things are good. We cook them and the Crappie the same. We we cook them with flour. We don't use cornmeal. Gotcha. And I tell you something I did last time. I put, put them in a big bowl, mix it up, salt and pepper, mix it up pretty good. And then I'll take sour cream and dab in there. A good bit of it and mix it all up. Mix it all up. And then put flour in there and mix it up till you don't have any wet ingredients. You put that cooker on 375 and boy, you feed that to your woman. You fix and get bait money. Yes, money. Go get me some more of that. <laughs> Don't you use like mustard? I saw a video. I did. I used to use mustard all the time and uh, I didn't have any. And I'd heard that Justin Wilson, I don't know if you know me, he's an old Cajun cook down here. And uh, he used sour cream. I said, well, I'm going to try it one time. And I did. And my wife said, don't ever use mustard again. Really? So, yeah. So what does the sour cream do? It just adds a different flavor to it. I don't the know, but I've asked a cook, and they said if they don't have milk, they use sour cream in their stuff. But let me tell you, it put a crust on that crappie like fried chicken. It was crustful. Really? Yeah. I did, you don't have to put panko in it or nothing. So salt, pepper, sour cream. That's it. And flour. And flour. Yep. You need some more baits? They, you woman, some of that. <laughs> I'll try because you sold me on the mustard. Because I, I love that episode you guys making that stuff up, you and your buddy. And yeah. I was like, and uh, I've used mustard ever since then. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Well, try that, cream. Do half and half and say how you like it. You're going to like it. There, there was another video you did. Now I, I think about uh, you guys are cooking back straps. Oh, yeah. And you do it like I think you had. The, I think you guys had the whole all the family over too at this at the time. But I, you guys, I mean, that was a great video of you guys doing your different versions of of. I think yeah. you actually fried either you fried it or your buddy fried it. Yeah, um, Martin grilled some the way he grills it, and I fried mine. We was that was at Seven J with Real Tree. Uh-huh. We go to uh, up in September. We go bow hunting up there every year, which is pretty awesome. There's a lot of deer in Wyoming, and. Um, <laughs> We cooked that up, and uh, the guy, his name's Jeff Smith. He says he looked at his wife because they cook for us every night. You know, they have a lodge and and they do the cooking. And uh, he said, "How come we ain't been doing this?" I said, "I don't know, but they doing it now." Really? That's awesome. Yeah, you got to have that salve to dip it in. It's good on deer, good on fish. It's mayonnaise. Horseradish and Worcestershire and blackening seasoning, and you mix that up. It's pretty good. I'll put the link in the uh, description below so everybody can see that video. Because well, that and the uh, the well, I'll show the mustard one. Do you have a video out there yet with the sour cream? We'll just say replace. I don't. It. I don't. I need to do that. <laughs> I'm trying to get into this YouTube deal. I got a channel, but I I hadn't advertised it. There's what I use, John, right there. We talked about it today, but oh, I got mine right here. I just had mine. Here's mine. Yeah, there you go. Yours is bigger than mine. <laughs> what is? It? Well, I want to ask you about the ports on it, but anyway, yeah. So look at the Hero Eight. I'm telling you, that's that's all I got. That's the port. Battery, Damn, battery, and slim call. What's that? I've never seen that slot before. Oh, it's nothing. You can edit that out, can't you? <laughs> no, it's okay. I guess so we're not we... live. <laughs> we're live. So, do you want to do a YouTube channel? I got one. Well, I mean, you've got a YouTube channel, but I'm just saying, I do you never have advertised? I got four or five. I got my wife's bow hunt on there. I got some fishing stuff, but I'm just filming me fishing. I got to start doing stuff with tips, you know, to make it interesting, make people want to watch. I'm just there trying are- because let me tell you, I am not a cameraman and I am not an editor. I'm just learning this. I got a newfound love for editors because <laughs> for them to have to sit there and look at that. And just pick out the golden pieces. I don't know. We had this one camera guy. He done it at night, but I think he was on drugs. <laughs> I mean, it, I, it, it'll make you, if you ain't stout, boy, editing is something. When you're editing your fishing videos, if you're not talking or catching a fish, everything else goes away. Unless you need little little transition periods between, maybe I'll keep something that's interesting, like a plane flying over, like uh, anything that's interesting, I'll keep, and then then I start putting it together and telling a story. The uh, but there are editors out there, just so you know that you can get. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there that'll do a, a YouTube edit for twenty bucks, twenty five yeah. bucks. Yeah, there are there but are. See, when I get in the boat, I hit that top button on that camera. And when I put my boat on a trailer, I hit it again to turn it off. <laughs> well, that's the way you do it. So that means you must have an external battery that makes you last that long. You must well, have. I got, a- that, yeah, I got that yellow tech, that stick, and yeah. you plug into it and turn your nav lights on. Right. And it. No, keeps no, the no, no, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I always tell people to do it exactly like you're saying. Hit the button. Forget about it. Because otherwise, you're going back and forth thinking about it, and you shouldn't. It shouldn't feel that way. You don't want to ruin your experience out of the water. You don't want to ruin your experience uh, hunting. No, but then you got eight hours worth of footage to look at. <laughs> <laughs> you fast forward until you hurt, you hear, or you see where you're talking. Boom. Yeah. Uh, so oh, I me- just learned that trick on my 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 editing tool where you cut it, you snip it, you snip it. Yeah, I'm learning, but it's just taking a while. 
You know what the secret, the secret too is if you're fishing, it used to be if you were fishing for four hours, you would have to edit for four hours. But I've got it down to now I can I can fish for four hours and it usually takes me an hour and a half to edit a video, depending upon how much depth I want to go into it. But it's just practice. But do me a favor, tell me about Fin Commander. I want to understand about Fin Commander and Okay. So all that's going on the floor. Yeah, we started, uh, we were, we were just, uh, you know, duck commander. We hunt, we do, uh, duck hunts. We've been filming duck hunts for good night, 30 years. And, um, I've been working there for 20 years. I've been hunting with them for 23 or four. And, uh, we'd always put a DVD, a video, a DVD, whatever. And, um, uh, it was just, you know, a spring, uh, you, your DVD would come out in the spring you know, at the Walmarts and, uh, but we'd be fishing and turkey hunting in the spring. And somebody finally said, why don't we just film that? So we said, okay. So they started filming it. So we've started two new brands, Fan Commander, and we've partnered with, uh, Leland Lures, Jeff Smith with a uh, crappie magnet and him. Of course, we'd known him for a long time. And, uh, we got some baits in Walmart and, Bass Pro, Cabela's, you know, different things, and uh, Academy. And Strut Commander on the turkey side, the, the Buck Commander camera guys are the ace turkey hunters. So they take that over. And we got calls, mouth calls, and stuff like that we're selling now on the turkey side. And so we're trying to keep content going all year long on Duck Commander's YouTube page. So now I have to tell people to like and subscribe. <laughs> you hear that, folks? Everybody get over there and like and subscribe. Oh, it's great. I, you actually have a short video. It's called, What is the Fin Commander? I, I watched that uh, earlier today. I don't yeah. know if you can recall on YouTube, but it's got about 12,000 views on it. But it's actually a really well done video. Uh, probably done by a professional well, editor. That's our camera guys. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really good, and really entertaining. Yeah. Uh, Which one was it? I don't know. They change names on them every once in a while. Well, this one's called "What Is Fin Commander," and that that was the name of the video. And uh, but it was entertaining, and I and I, I thought it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. A lot more characters than you see on the other, on like Duck Dynasty or whatever. Different faces. Interesting. Oh yeah, Jeff Smith's on there. W. E. Phillips is on there. He is. Uh, I took his job, and I said that he is my stunt double. <laughs> but he uh, he lives in Arkansas and has a really good duck hole. You need to go duck hunt. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, he's one of my good friends, best friends. Yeah. So we're just trying to just do something to keep stuff going, you know, all year long. Got it. And so you're out, you're over there still. You're packaging up the calls. You're 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 still working in the warehouse doing your thing. Yep, man. Martin's still there. We got the wrong last name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love working there. It's uh, Phil. When we started, Phil said it's a lot different. I worked in a paper mill for 21 years, shift work, and it was all performance driven. You had to have so much, you know, meat standard and all that for eight hours and you get down there and it's like you're sloughing off all the time. Phil said, hey, if you get sleepy, take a nap. You get hungry, <laughs> get Miss Kay to cook you something. You want to go fishing, go fishing. You know what you got to get done. Just get it done. So, you know, it's a little bit more structured now. But, you know, back then before the show and all that, it was it was pretty laid back. And it's still tried to still try to keep that somewhat. But. On the same side, you got to run a business too. Yeah. The uh, so you do you're doing majority speaking engagements. That's how you're spending most. It sounds like every weekend. That's what you're. <laughs> yeah, until this week. <laughs> this week got everything, right. down. everything got shut down. Yeah. Of security was pretty awesome last weekend to go through. It was pretty quick. <laughs> but no, a couple of people didn't even sit beside anybody on the airplane. So. Was there that many people on the airplane or no? No, I wasn't even full. No. Mm -mm. And a lot of people sitting on one row, just one person on a row. Yeah. Yeah. 
Of course, I can understand the scare, you know. I mean, it's don't nobody want to catch it. Right. Until we understand how to knock it back, you know. There's no right. sense. In, but, like, I mean, no sense in being scared either. I know mean, a lot of people's probably apprehensive about it, but it's going to pass. It's going to pass. And uh, I never thought it would affect the fishing industry. But when Illinois closed its uh, lakes and parks and such, uh, it's affected us big time. We've got essentially two or three lakes that are available to us to fish now. Uh, and those lakes are going to get hit hard in the next you know, two weeks. Uh, but at least we still do have lakes to fish. And there are a lot of private lakes, I guess, people could fish. Yeah, that's, that's wild. That's serious there when they start doing stuff like that. Yeah. I never thought in my lifetime I'd see anything. That, well, I just never thought about it. You know, you don't ever think something's going to happen so drastic. It's going to change the way you do things right. every day. But here we are. Yeah. The uh, In terms of your speaking engagements, are you coming back to Illinois when, uh, at any time? Uh, no, no. That would be uh, – no, I don't think so. I'm going to uh, – they're re actually redoing them. Just going to try to start them back, you know, the latter part of May. And they're still keeping an eye on the situation. But uh, that's over in Georgia. And then I go to Ontario, Canada. That's pretty cool. Or Toronto. I go to Toronto. Uh -huh. That's going to be pretty cool. And uh, it's going, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be in Illinois anytime soon. Ohio, I think. Will you be doing iCast? Yeah, I'll be there. We'll be there. Mm -hmm. I was playing with the idea of going this year uh, just to experience it. As a um, guide, you can, I guess you can go. It is all the neat toys, and it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome to see. It'll take you a couple of days to see everything, though. But that's bass. That's everything. Bass, catfish, the whole nine years. Yeah. Anybody that's anybody's there. Do they separate the different departments, or areas of the show? Uh, in? No, not really. Not no. really. I think, well, they may. No, not really. No. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to think of where everything is because I remember <laughs> seeing, you know, B&M Poles and Ozarks and uh, Mike and M's over there. And they're all in the same thing. And then it ain't, they ain't far apart. No. No. Well, if you're back in Illinois, do me a favor, get a hold of me. I'd love to take you out on Lake of Egypt and show you the lake. Um, I'd like to. I'd like to. Do you see Kyle Shane Harry? Oh, absolutely. See him out there all the time. Uh, in fact, he's been guiding a lot on the lake recently, be, um, probably just because the fishing is really good right now on, on Lake of Egypt. I thought that's where he fished on that lake. He's the one that come down with Ronnie that time. Oh, yeah? Crappie, crappie time. I tell you, I was floored that they caught as many fish the first time they was on the lake. Really? So I found out that they were on the water at 3 o'clock in the morning scanning. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. But still... <laughs> To be there just that long and catch as many fish as they did was was pretty impressive to me. Was that spider rigging? Because that tip where they yeah, spider, spider rigging. We were spider rigging. I did long line in that show a little bit, but we mostly spider. It was in May. And right. Do you think that the live scope will get rid of or reduce the amount of spider rigging that's going on? I think that people will modify their spider rigging is not to use as many poles like they may use just one or two and and use it like that you know looking ahead and, and seeing what they can see where they can just adjust on the fly right and stuff like that but still man it's the way they act it's, it's tell you it's showing you how what you thought is not really what's happening Hey, look at the weights at Grenada last weekend. I mean, uh, Brandon and his partner put up what was it, almost 17, 18 pounds per day. And that's becoming the normal. I mean, that's 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 I becoming know. the normal. And uh, we thought we had a good first day. And these guys just like they smoke it. I mean, it's just I mean, 
and it'll be interesting. You're definitely going to have to modify your spider rigging, like you said, so that you can be more aggressive out there. Um, I told you a story earlier today where, you know, I'm watching a 15 year old kid uh, do it in front of me and catch three fish and I'm struggling to catch, you know, it, it, they get it. And it, it, so from, a, from that perspective, I think live scope is a good thing because I do think that uh, it's going to bring younger anglers there. It's definitely exciting. When I get a young person in my boat on a guide trip, they get it and they're excited and they're like, put me in the zone, Matt. And so, you know, yeah, yeah. they see it. And it's like a video game. I love seeing that. So, well, they're like this all the time, looking at their phones all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, them boys is going to be the ones that's because showing up going to teach you something if they get on, if they can get it on where they can use it every day. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be cheap, finding cheap codes and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, hey, John, I don't want to take any more time from you. Uh, I do appreciate you spending time with us and uh, speaking, you know, is there any show that you'd like to talk about? I know that you're going to have to look out a little because of what's going on, but is there anything you'd like to tell anybody? Uh, well, no, uh, you know, everything's kind of shutting down. Just don't be too nervous over this deal. Uh, do things together and just, just you know, just wash your hands. But golly, if uh, like us, you know, I'm a Christian. I believe uh, that Jesus is who He said He was. And uh, if I was to get it, and it and it took me out, hey, sorry, I beat you to it. But we got a better place we're going to be, and uh, I don't want to leave my wife or my family. But I'm not worried about it. I mean, it's going to blow over and it's just a virus. We just got to, we just got to figure out how to beat it back. Yep. That's right. So, Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah. Call me anytime. All right. Thanks, John. All right.